Jellyfish have given the green light to microbiologists. We can actually, for the first time, visualize all these things we just thought about before. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. 60 years ago, Japanese army scientists experimented with an organic paste that glowed softly in the dark. They planned to put a stripe on each soldier's back. The glow would be subtle enough not to draw attention, but visible enough to keep patrols together as they filed through the jungle night. Two decades later, a researcher named Osamu Shimomura reviewed the World War II experiments and proceeded to develop a paste that was luminescent. It would become one of the great tools of molecular biology. Osamu, who is now in his 70s, demonstrated how the paste is made from small sea creatures called Ciprodyna. He used a sample gathered more than a half a century ago in Japan, yet it still holds a property known as bioluminescence. It is an ability some creatures have of generating their own light. Fireflies have it too. After the war, Shimomura moved to the U.S. and pursued his interest in bioluminescence. His attention turned to a jellyfish called Equoria Equoria. The jellyfish luminesced from the fringes of its mantle. He isolated the protein from the jellyfish that caused the luminescing, called equorine. It is a beautiful blue. But surprisingly, in the wild, the jellyfish gives off a green light. Shimomura looked more closely, and what he discovered surprised him. The jellyfish wasn't luminescing at all. It was fluorescing. To explain the difference, we have our ever-ready guide to the genome standing by. The difference between bioluminescence and biofluorescence is the source of the light. Creatures that bioluminesce produce their own light. An enzyme called luciferase combined with oxygen produces their luminescent light. Biofluorescence is different. Creatures that biofluoresce use incoming light to emit fluorescent light. They use a protein called green fluorescent protein, or GFP, to convert incoming blue light to green fluorescent light. No one knows why jellyfish would have evolved over eons to emit blue light and then convert it to green. Some scientists speculate that green light would be more helpful to the animal in dark, murky seawater. For molecular biologists, the green fluorescent protein, GFP, has been very helpful indeed. I'm a cell biologist, and green fluorescent protein has, um, has become indispensable for our research. Um, as a cell biologist, what we think about primarily, like a realtor, is location. Where are things happening within a cell? Green fluorescent protein lets us determine that. So uh, we use it all the time. These are crystals of the GFP. Once researchers had the protein, they identified the gene that expressed the protein and created this model of the protein molecule. What you can see is it consists of a a can-like structure of protein, which is formed by these sheets of what we call beta-pleated sheets surrounding a central core of the protein. So this structure in the center of this can is capable of taking one blue photon of light and turning it into one green photon of light. The genes in cells produce thousands of proteins responsible for cellular life. Researchers want to know what these proteins do, where they go, how they contribute to the life of cells. Well, uh, the, the easiest thing to see is mitosis, when chromosomes condense and then separate, and then the cell divides. But beyond that, mitochondria are moving, vesicles are sliding along elements of the cytoskeleton. The cell knows what it needs to do, and it marshals its resources to do that. It's a beehive of activity. A protein is an invisible thing, invisible unless you attach the green fluorescing gene, the GFP, to the gene which makes that protein. Now, whenever the gene makes that protein, it also makes GFP. And wherever that protein goes in a cell, GFP goes too. 
Green fluorescent protein has made it possible for researchers to see and begin to understand how living cells work. GFP can be used with live cells, and this is so important because cells undergo many dynamic processes. And in order to be able to visualize them, we need to be able to film cells over time. Since GFP is a naturally occurring protein expressed by a gene and produced by the cell's machinery, it functions without any toxic effect on the cell. This is a human cell that is expressing GFP actin. So actin is one of the cytoskeleton proteins. The cytoskeleton is the cell skeleton. So it gives the cell shape. Actin is also involved in cell motility. And in addition, these networks, these cables of actin that you see running through the cell are like railroad tracks for vesicles. Vesicles move using proteins called motor proteins along these actin cables. Actin is well below the resolution limit of the light microscope, and so it's impossible to see it with traditional transmitted light microscopy. But by attaching GFP to the actin, we can now easily visualize it using fluorescence microscopy. Researchers are finding new uses for GFP all the time. It's an important way to verify experiments involving genes and proteins. The arrival of green fluorescent protein really revolutionized cell biology as we know it today. It really changed dramatically how we view cells, how we view organisms, because we could actually for the first time visualize all these things we just thought about before. Things we had snapshots of, we could actually watch movies of, watch things moving around, give us a whole new perspective on how things work. And the thousands of papers that have come out using this protein since its inception are sort of a, a good measure of how important it is to all of us in biology. There is a limit in terms of the color spectrum that can be created with uh, starting with the parent protein, green fluorescent protein. In the last 10-15 years, a red fluorescent protein was discovered from a different species, from coral. Um, that protein has also been isolated, cloned, mutated, and a variety of other colors have been uh, created. A, a different color is important for a variety of reasons. Um, one of my favorite uses of different colors is that you can not only localize where that protein goes within a cell, but you can also then, um, comparing it to a different colored protein, look at its, the temporal basis of its location. In other words, which protein gets there first, the green or the red? That tells you the order in which those proteins interact. So the biologists go merrily on their way, using a whole paint box of glowing genes. Then, in what we suspect is their spare time, they've created glowing mice, frogs, fish, and sheep. All because a chemist named Osumu Shimomura wanted to find out how jellyfish light up the sea. That just shows where curiosity can take you. For Professor Shimomura and his colleagues Martin Chalfi and Roger Chen, it took them all to Sweden. I wish to convey to you our warmest congratulations, and I now ask you to step forward to receive the Nobel Prize in, chem in Chemistry from the hands of His Majesty the King. The secrets of the sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.